The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. The makers of Bromo Quinine Cold Tablets bring you another adventure of Sherlock Holmes with Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes and Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson. Watch out for colds, ladies and gentlemen. They're very prevalent now, and a little cold may be the start of a serious illness. What you want to do at the first sign of a cold is take famous Bromo Quinine Tablets. Bromo Quinine Tablets are made for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is the relief of colds. They act fast, give you speedy results, and that's what you want when you have a cold. Bromo quinine tablets are known the world over for their efficacy. Trust your reputation when buying a medicine. Do this when you feel a cold coming on, and you'll ask for Bromo quinine cold tablets. And now, as we make our way through the night to Dr. Watson's hospitable door, we notice a feeling of spring in the air. The buds are swollen on the trees, still black and dripping from the rain. There's the smell of warm, damp earth. Delicious. Hey, Mr. Manny? Well, hello, Dr. Watson. I didn't see you in the doctor. Yes, I've been out checking up to see if my magnolias survived the winter. Any casualties? No, they all seem to be fairly bursting with bugs. <laughs> There's nothing as delicious as that first faint whiff of spring. <laughs> oh, all is treacherous. Come along to the house before we both catch our, our death of cold. After you, sir. Not a trauma boy. None of that age before beauty nonsense. I'm not as decrepit as all that. Hello. What's this? The front hall littered with trunks and suitcases? Oh, yes. I'm afraid my annual wanderlust has broken out rather early this spring. I'm off on a little jaunt first thing tomorrow morning, but uh, to come along into the study. Does that mean that this is the last of our storytelling evening? Uh, for this winter, yes, I'm, I'm afraid it does. Well, I... I trust I'm not too forward if I hope to be invited back again in, in the fall. Oh, of course not. You know we'll be waiting for your return. Oh, thanks very much. It's very, very decent of you. To put up with the meanderings me of, of an old fellow like myself, huh? <laughs> I appreciate it, you know. But sit down, Mr. Manning. Sit down there over there in the usual chair. <laughs> Let's get on with our story before I get all glittery and <laughs> sentimental. You're going to tell us about Professor Moriarty tonight, aren't you? Well, I had intended to, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to tell you the adventure of a retired colorman instead. Retired colorman? Isn't that a military term? No, it isn't. Mr. Josiah P. Amberley has been the junior member of Brickfall and Amberley, manufacturers of artistic paint boxes. He made quite a tiny little fortune. Retired from business at the age of 61, bought a house at Lewisham and then settled down. The very next year, 1897, I think it was, the old fool married. Married? Yes, married. The woman, 30 years his junior. Yeah, that's always a bit risky. Risky? <laughs> risky. <laughs> Within two years, he was as miserable a creature as crawls beneath the sun. Oh, dear me, I'm uh, jumping ahead of the story again. As I was saying, it was the 23rd of April, 1899, and a rainy and disagreeable April it had been. Holmes was in a melancholy and philosophic mood that morning as he stood by the window, watching the raindrops chasing one another down, down the pane. Rain had always depressed him when he was not working on a case. When he was working on a case, I don't believe he realized that there was such a thing <laughs> as weather. Look at that beastly rain. Hasn't stopped for three days. Might as well be another flood. Though well, heaven only knows what transgressions could have brought it on. That's been a really first-class crime for months. Well, cheer up, Holmes. Cheer up. It's probably good for the crops or something. The shortage in crime? No, no, no. The rain, of course. Probably makes the little buds sprout and the little shoots shoot. Oh, don't be so little... blasted optimistic. Oh. More likely rotting all the seed that's already been planted. Rain. Where the deuce does it all come from? This confounded English climate... Why any man with half a brain stays on this rain-soaked, mist-bound island is beyond me. Oh, I doubt if the men have anything to do with it. It's the ladies, God bless them. This climate gives them perfect complexions. And with so many lovely creatures about, what Englishman would think of quitting the country? So much beauty is such exquisite... Oh, rubbish, Watson, rubbish. The spring has given you a temporary softening of the brain. I regret to say it seems to have that effect on most impressionable males. Impressionable nonsense. When a woman's concerned in one of your cases, you never even notice whether she's 16 or 60. And then you don't care whether she's got a well-turned ankle or, or whether she's flat-footed. Oh, why should I? Holmes, there are times when I think you're a 
Uh, cold blooded fish. <laughs> Possibly, Watson. Possibly. Why do you suppose the fool doesn't show up? What fool? Josiah P. Amberley. Oh, is he one of your clubs? Oh, I suppose I may call him so. He's been sent to me by Scotland Yard. Oh, by, by Scotland Yard. Quite. By Lestrade, to be exact. I must consider the case fairly hopeless if Lestrade hands the matter over to me of his own accord. Look, Holmes, there's a, there's a cab drawing up in, in front of our front door. He must, he must be your client, Mr. Yeah. Amberley. Yeah. Strange-looking individual, eh, Watson? He's quite an old fellow. Looks literally bowed down with care. Ah, but no weakling. Look at those shoulders and that chest. The framework of a giant. He's arguing with the cab driver about the fare. Huh. <laughs> Watches the pennies, eh? I must say, I don't like his face. So fierce and eager, and the way those snaky locks of grizzled hair stick out from under his hat. I wonder what he's worrying. What's worrying, Mr. Amberley? Worrying to bet it has nothing to do with money. I imagine nothing else could upset him to any great extent. Nonsense, Holmes. You always look on the base side of, of human nature. Here he is now. Come in, come in. Uh, uh, which of you is Sherlock Holmes? I am. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. Uh, oh, you... I'm a broken man. He's robbed me, the swine. Taken everything I had in the world. I thought he was my friend and he took everything. Right from under my nose. In my own house. Robbed me, he did. Yes, I felt sure it was a question of money. Money? Who said money? He stole my wife. The light of my life. The apple of my eye. True, she was very expensive, but after all, she was my wife, and he stole her. And now, Mr. Amberley, my beautiful, beautiful blonde wife, oh. hair like gold, and my securities. The money I saved up with years of hard work. Gone. All gone. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, first, tell us about your wife. Now, how long have you been married? Two years. Two years, and she's tired of me already. Two little years. Yes, easy, my good man, easy. More facts and fewer recriminations if we're to get to the bottom of this case. Well... Three years ago, I retired. Bought a house. Big house at Lewisham. Cost me plenty of money, that house did. Well, sir, I'd never lived alone in a big house before, and got sort of lonely. House began to need looking after, so I thought I'd start looking around for a wife. Nice, healthy, young wife to look after me. Then I met Ella. And some girl she was, too. A good cook. Hair like gold. Could bake a beef and kidney pie that would melt in your mouth. So I thought I might as well get married. Yeah, very practical, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I figured at that time. But Lord, Mr. Holmes, the money a woman runs into. They made my heart bleed the way the money went. Mm, I still thought you'd have been glad when the other fellow took it off your hands. But who was this... Uh... This wolf in sheep's clothing? Yes. His name was Dr. Ray Ernest, a young fella. He used to come over at night and play chess with me. Yeah, I see. He stole your wife. Yes, and my securities. Yes, but surely the securities are registered. You can hardly hope to convert them. Maybe not. But I must have them back. And you've got to find those securities for me, Mr. Holmes. You've got to find them. And your wife, of course? Well, of course, of course, wherever she is, they are. Ah, quite. On the other hand, Mr. Amberley, I confess I don't see that I can be of much service. It's a routine matter, and I'm oh. sure that Scotland Yard would be only too glad... They haven't found a thing, not a single security. Oh, very well, very well, very well, very well. And we'll do our best. Uh, Dr. Watson will take a run down to your house at Lewisham to look over the ground. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, it's Lewisham. I hardly expected you to come yourself. Oh. After my heavy financial loss... Nobody cares if an old man's heart is broken. Oh, stop that blubbering. I'm not coming myself because I'm preoccupied with the case of the two Coptic patriarchs. This particular case doesn't seem to be very complicated. I'm sure, Mr. Amberley, that Dr. Watson can handle it as well as I could myself. <laughs> well, if that's the best that you can offer, I suppose I must be satisfied. Huh? Pampered, that's what she was. And that young man that uh, he picked pocket, I treated him like my own son. He had the run of the house. And now look how they've treated me. Me, you never harmed Quite, yourself. quite. And now, um, good day, Mr. Amberley. Yeah? Hey, oh, 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 yes, well. Well, good day, Mr. Holmes. And I shall expect Dr. Watson this afternoon. You have my address, I believe. Oh, the ingratitude, the rank ingratitude of it all. I must say, Holmes, uh, I like the way you shoved all this off onto my shoulders. Coptic patriarchs, indeed. You just don't want to go. <laughs> right, Watson, right, the very first time. You've been begging for a case all to yourself for months. Well, here it is. Yes, and a nice case you've given me, I must say. That old skin <laughs> Oh, my daughter, oh, my ducats, eh? With the emphasis on the ducats, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, confound that passage. There. Ah, that's better. That's dash good. <laughs> Hello. 
Someone steps on the stairs. Watson, if I'm not mistaken, and in a triumphant mood. Hello, Holmes. Well, <laughs> I'm back. Hail the conquering hero. <laughs> it's a afternoon, I take it, with the light of victory in your eye. Well, I, I did manage to dig up a clue or so. Good. How about Mr. Amberley's place of residence? Uh, what's it like? Well, he, he calls it the Haven. Oh, charming. Yes, isn't it? I, I think the place would interest you, Holmes. You know that particular quarter, the monotonous brick streets, the weary suburban highways. Well, right in the middle of them lies this beautiful old home, surrounded by a high sun-baked wall, mottled with lichens and topped with moss, the sort of wall... That... You may omit the poetry, Watson. I note that it was a high brick wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I should have guessed it was the haven, even if I hadn't asked a lounger who was, who was smoking outside in the street. A lounger? Yes, a tall, dark, little moustached man with a, with a curious look in his eyes. With great tinted glasses and a masonic type in. Good heavens. How do you know? Oh, the fool. A child of ten could have seen through that. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I don't see. Never mind. Continue with your story, Watson. Well, I'd hardly entered the gateway before I saw Mr. Amberley coming down the drive to meet me. He began at once. Pouring out his grievances. We walked back to the house together. And, uh... Well, once inside the wall, I must say, I've never seen a place worse kept. Garden running to weeds and in a dreadful neglect. The house, too, was slatternly to, to the last degree. It just goes to show what happens to a place when there's no womanly hand about to, <laughs> to keep it in order. Yes, but, uh, Mrs. Amberley's only been missing a few days. Hardly time for so much disintegration to take place. Must have set in before she left. Oh, possibly. At any rate, Mr. Ambler seemed to be ashamed of it. He was doing his best to remedy it, though I must admit that his efforts looked a trifle ineffectual. What's to become of me? What's to become of me? My wife gone, most of my fortune stolen. Now, oh, come in, Dr. Watson, come in. Here you see what remains of what used to be called my home. An Englishman's home is his castle, so they say. But home is where the heart is. And my heart. Well, look out, Dr. Watson, look out. That wood waste just seems to Oh, look at that. Look at that. My, my best pair of trousers. Mm, too bad. Hey, careful, careful. You almost kept in that pot of paint. Oh, that's it all, Amber. This is absolutely limit. Sorry, I shouldn't have left that pot of paint in the middle of the passage, I suppose. That when one's alone in the house, one forgets. Well, alone? So you've been doing this painting yourself? I must take this strange occupation under the circumstances. One must do something to ease an aching heart. And step in here, Dr. Watson. This is my study, my sanctum sanctorum. Oh, so sanctum sanctorum. <laughs> I see you've just finished painting woodwork in, in, in this room, too. Hmm. What a smell of paint. Yes, it's not dry yet. That's why I have a fire in here. Now, let me see. Where did you keep your security? In the safe in that wall. This room is really a strong room, like a bank, with an iron shutter on the window and an iron door. Burglar proof. Ah, oh, that's the irony of it. No thief from without could have taken my money. But my wife, my own wife. Uh, there's a picture, Dr. Watson, on the mantel. Taken in a wedding dress. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice-looking girl, Emily. Doesn't look the sort. Uh, and a fighter the ingrate. Oh, really? Why, the very night, that very night, I bought two upper circle seats at the Haymarket Theater. What did you give her a treat, I did. Oh, didn't, didn't she go? No. Last moment she said she felt sick. That she had a headache, she did. I believed her, went alone. When I came back, she was gone. The safe was right in fact. Just a minute. Uh, what night was that, Mr. Amler? Last Thursday. Oh, Thursday, was it? Yes, an unused ticket. Money wasted. She was always wasting money. May I have that ticket, Mr. Amler? Hold on, hold on. You will throw it in the fire. No, why? I wanted to get rid of it. I want to get rid of everything that reminds me of her. Here, give me that picture. Well, I, I see. Right into the fire she goes, closer. May her soul burn in torment as that picture's burning now. <laughs> Unpleasant fellow, eh, Watson? This case begins to look more somber than I suspected. If you could only have brought me that ticket, Watson. Oh, I did my best, Holmes. I, I may not have the ticket itself, but I did notice the number of the seat. Oh, bravo, Watson. How did you happen to remember it? Well, as a matter of fact, it, it was my place in form at school, 31. See from the bottom. And, and so it, 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 it stuck in my head. Oh, splendid, old fellow. Then, uh... Amberley's seat must have been 30 or 32. Hear me, hear me now. Uh, who can that be? Well, whoever it is, he's fast impatient. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here he comes up the stairs, fairly running. Come in. 
Well, bless my soul if it isn't our old friend, our good friend, Mr. Amberley. What's up? A telegram, Mr. Holmes. I can't make anything of it. Here, here, see for yourself. Uh-huh. Come at once without fail. Yes. I can give you information as to your recent lost find, Elman, yes, the vicarage. Huh. Dispatched at 210 from Little Purlington. Little Purlington in Essex, I believe, not far from Frinton. You will start at once, of course. Uh, Watson, look up the train. Uh, it's probably a hoax. What could anyone in Little Purlington but know But it's from a very responsible person. Uh, where's my crockford? Uh, yes, here it is. Uh... We'll look up this minister of the gospel. E, 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 Elman, Elman. Here it is. Here, J, C, Elman, M, A, living of Mossmore, come Little Purlington. Yes, but I still don't think... Surely, Mr. Amberley, you want to find your wife and your lost security. Of course, of course. But think of the waste of time and money. Here we are, here we are, here we are. Here's a train from Liverpool Street at... 5.20. 5.20. Yes, you just have time. Mr. Amberley, you go downstairs and hail a cab. I'll help Dr. Watson throw a few things in the bag. You think I need Dr. Watson? Perhaps I'd better go alone. Oh, no, 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 no. It may be a trap for all we know. Uh, I don't think I shall go. Mr. Amberley, it would make the worst possible impression on both police and on myself if you refused to follow up so obvious a clue. We should feel that you were not in earnest about this investigation. Uh, very well, very well, I'll go. Perhaps you'd, be- you'd better go with him, Holmes. What? Take your case, Watson, after the brilliant way in which you've handled it. No, 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 no. Go along, Mr. Ambley, or you'll miss your train. Uh, very well, but the expense is... Here you are, Watson. Here, here, here's your bag. It's packed. Yes, you never know when you may be called off on a case like this. I packed it for you. Oh, no, I do think uh, that... Quite. I... Now, whatever you do, see that he really does go to Little Purlington. Yes, I don't think it is. Uh, again, quite. It... Should you break away and uh, try to return, get to the nearest telegraph station and send me the single word bolted. I will arrange to have it reach me wherever I am. What? You have something to look into at this end, then? I have, Watson. This case is beginning to take on a rather curious and sinister aspect. Above all, old man, take good care of yourself. And Mr. Amberley. Before we find the outcome of Watson's curious mission, ladies and gentlemen, I have a few words to say. Here's what you want to do when you feel a cold coming on. Here's what you want to do at the very first sign of a cold. Take famous bromoquinine cold tablets. Bromoquinine tablets don't fool. No, sir, they get right after a cold symptom. They get right after a cold's misery. They relieve the headache and other pains that go with a cold. They relieve that stuffiness and feeling of depression that accompanies the cold. They help reduce the fever that goes with a cold. Bromoquinine tablets are fast and decisive in their action. First because they're made especially for the relief of the common cold. And secondly, because they act internally. You can take lots of things for the relief of a cold, but nothing more reputable and reliable than famous bromoquinine tablets. Get them at any drugstore at the first symptom of a cold. Ask for bromo, B-R-O-M-O, quinine, Q-U-I-N-I-N-E, bromoquinine cold tablets. Found this rain. Everything's as dark as a black hole of Calcutta. Yeah, the haven. Shitty little haven this is. Uh, I can find a window unlatched. Not much chance on the first floor. The old boy's two quarters. Ooh. Second story window, perhaps. Now, if I can manage to scale this porch pillar. Ah, this confounded rain. Just simply as a greased pole. Come on. Hey, there we are. Yeah. Uh, there's a window that's unlatched. Easy, easy, easy. Ah, uh, now. One foot over the sill. Now we Up with your ends. Up with them, I tell you. Thought I wouldn't see you prowling around down below, eh? Well, I've caught you red-handed. <laughs> Nice wild goose chase that turned out to be. That friend of yours, Sherlock Holmes, is a fool. I'm sure, Mr. Amley, if you'll call and see him, he can explain. Explain, explain nothing. That vicar had never seen that telegram before. The way he treated us. You might have thought we were suspicious characters. Then missing the last train and having to sit up all night in the confounded station with the rain dripping through the roof. Well, we could have gone to an hotel. Gone to an hotel? That costs money. Gone to an hotel, indeed. Well, here's your house, Mr. Amley. I think I'll go along home now and get some breakfast. You will not. I'm going to come into the house and see if everything's all... I look up there. 
The window over the porch. It's open. Perhaps you left it like that yourself. Rubbish. I tell you, I don't like the looks of this. Uh, where's my key? Where's my key? Here it is. Uh, we'll soon find out. I say, it is gloomy, isn't it? Look, look, look. Uh, someone's been here writing up footprints on the fresh paint. I'll find him if I have to tear the place apart. Meet to that, Mr. Ambley. We're here waiting for you in the study. Holmes! Good heavens, oh, when start you get How did you get in here? Dived in through the, um, through an upstairs window. That's burglary, young man. Yes. Burglary's always been an alternate profession that I cared to adopt it. I'll admit I was glad I hadn't when I walked into Inspector Lestrade's gun last night. He thought I was a burglar, too. But come, we're, we're keeping him waiting. He's in the library. Here they are, Lestrade. I told you we could expect them back before 10. No, but look here, that's not Lestrade. That's the man I saw loitering in front of the gate yesterday afternoon. The fellow with the black moustache and the glasses. Yes, oh, that's right, Dr. Watson. Yes. yes. Lestrade fondly imagines that's a disguise. Oh, no, look here, no. Oh, it's yeah. as obvious to anyone who takes uh, the trouble. Look here, I've had enough of this. I won't have two busybodies prowling around my house in the middle of the night. And what's more, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I suspect you sent that telegram yourself. Very clever of you, Mr. Amberley, very clever. You look a trifle pale. I thought a night in the country might oh, be I know enough of that. What kind of a fool do you take me for? I have you put behind the bars, all of you. Oh, surely not Inspector Lestrade. Why, he's from Scotland Yard. I don't care if it's from the House of Lords. Yeah, none of that. No. No. You're all disgraced. Somebody did disgrace. Breaking into my house in the middle of the night. Oh, I'll get you for that. What were you doing in here last night? Answer me that. Looking for the bodies. What? Looking for the bodies. The bodies of your wife and Dr. Ernest. What have you done with them? How dare you? How dare you? You murdered them in this room. We have ample proof. Why, you... Stop him, Watson. Stop him. He's got a capsule in his hand. It's poison. He's going to swallow it. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, no, get that no, out. Put it out. Put it out. Put it out. Put it out. Oh, I'll take no, it. No, short cut, Mr. Ambley, if you please. Uh, Everything decently and in its proper place. Uh, take him away, Lestrade. Right. Uh, come along now. No more monkey business. No one put any that. All right, come on. Phew. What a scene. That old brute Ambley is a murderer. How did you find it out? Well, the first clue was the theater ticket. Which it didn't use. We found that out. Well, that destroyed his alibi. Yes, the theater people assured us that there had been two empty seats, not just one. The second clue was the smell of fresh paint. What was he trying to hide by that? What? Gas. He asphyxiated his wife and Dr. Ernst in this room. Good heavens. His strong room, which was as near airtight as anything could humanly possibly yeah, be. but how? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. That's what I was looking for when I broke into the house last night. And what did you find? Look here. Notice the gas pipe along the skirting here? It rises in the wall, in the angle there, and ends in that plaster rose in the center of the ceiling where it's concealed by that ornamentation. It ends wide open. How, how horrible. Yes, then look here. Look, near the floor. What do you make out? Two words written on the wall. Two, we were. We, uh, then a scroll. We were. What, what does that mean? The poor devil was trying to write, we were murdered. I can see the whole ghastly scene. It was last Thursday night. Amberley had lured his wife and Dr. Ernest into this room. Oh, listen to that wind. I wish it would stop. It's not so bad in this room. We have a little game in here, eh, Dr. Ernest? Just you sit here, there you are. Entertain the doctor while I go and look for the chessmen. Excuse me for a minute, Dr. Ernest. Oh, certainly. And if you don't mind, I'll close the door. That's such a draft. It'll be much cozier in here with the door closed. Much cozier. You said wind only wouldn't hold. I feel so depressed. Is there something terrible we're going to happen? Oh, nonsense, my dear Mrs. Amberley. This house is getting on your nerves. Is there any wonder? He gets worse and worse. Oh, Dr. Ernest, I'm so frightened. You must go away. What? Now, don't be alarmed, Mrs. Amberley. I've had your husband under observation for some time. I'm afraid he isn't quite normal. It, uh, it isn't safe for you to stay here any longer. But, Dr. Ernest, don't you understand? I can't leave my husband. Heaven knows what would happen if I left him alone. We could get a nurse to take care of him. You can't stay here with him. <laughs> what was that? Josiah, he heard us. He was outside the door listening. Oh, Dr. Ernest, this is terrible. What can we do? Listen. You hear that? It's the gas. Someone's turned on the gas. I can smell it. Hurry, hurry. We've got to get out of here. What? Oh, the door's locked. He's locked the door. Amberley. Oh, there, Amberley. Open the door. Quick. The window. No, that's locked, too. The, the iron shutters. Amberley. Amberley, let us out. <laughs> you realize what this means? He's going to kill us. 
He must have gone mad, I'm afraid. Yes, yes, it's what I was afraid of. He's a maniac. A homicidal maniac. Oh, this is horrible. We, we're trapped. What a fool I was. But what can we do? I, I feel so faint. I, I can hardly breathe. Here, here. Lie down on the floor. Yeah, it's better down here. It's no use. I can't stay... Stay awake. I don't mind anymore. I'm quite all right. Really. Mrs. Amberley. Mrs. Amberley. Don't give up. I... I feel faint, too. I must warn people. It's dangerous. I... I, I can't think. God, I, I can't breathe. I can't think. <laughs> what a tragic story, Dr. Watson. And was Mr. Amberley insane? They decided he was. He ended his days in an asylum. Did they ever find the body? Yes, at the bottom of an old well, the opening of which had been cleverly concealed by a dog cat. I see. And now I'm afraid it's, it's time to say goodbye. Well, not goodbye, Dr. Watson. Au revoir. Well, just as you say, Mr. Manning. Anyway, in conclusion, I want to thank you and our radio audiences who so patiently listened to the reminiscences of a, of a sentimental old fuller. And I want to wish you all, old and young, an extremely happy summer. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, Basil Rathbone would like to say a few words to you. But first, may I give you a word of advice. Remember the danger of the so-called common cold. Remember the sickness it can cause and the bills it can cost. Act promptly, decisively, at the first sign of a cold. Take famous bromoquinine tablets. Bromoquinine tablets have a reputation. Their fame extends to all quarters of the globe. Their merit is an assured fact. Reliability is the one thing you want in any medicine, especially in a medicine for the relief of cold. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate when you feel a cold coming on. Go right to your druggist and get a box of bromoquinine tablets. The small cost may save you a lot in grief and expense. Ask clearly for bromoquinine cold tablets. And now, here's Basil Rathbone. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, Sherlock Holmes has always been... One of the greatest characters ever created. Tonight, as our present series ends, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the makers of bromoquinine, for giving me the opportunity of playing Holmes on the air. Especially with such an inspired Dr. Watson as tonight's Bruce. Oh, well, that's very, very... Oh, please. Oh, sorry, what? Speaking for myself and Mr. Bruce, may I express our gratitude to our radio audience for the many letters of interest and encouragement that we received. And finally... A word of appreciation to all the performers and others concerned with this program who have helped so immeasurably in making the Baker Street days live again. And now, until fall, it's time for me to say au revoir and good luck. <laughs> I've been listening to a Sherlock Holmes adventure adapted by Edith Miser from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Retired Colorman with Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes and Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson. The Sherlock Holmes series was produced by Tom McKnight. This program was presented from Hollywood by the makers of bromoquinine cold tablets. Quick relief for cold. This is Knox Manning speaking. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.